there. I'm Charlotte, a journalist with the Steambird. It's a pleasure to meet you. If you've got time, would you be open to doing an exclusive interview? My journalistic instincts tell me that there's a treasure trove of news in you just bursting to get out. I'm well aware that following the truth wherever it leads is risky business. But buried truths make exclusive news. So good luck trying to keep secrets from me when we need a good story. Uh, uh, telling journalists in this world with a strong sense of journalistic integrity. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I make it my goal to provide the public with only the best exclusive news through powerful, engaging, and honest reporting. When I first started working as a journalist, I didn't know anything about how to write the news. So I had to figure it all out for myself by reading articles by other people. As well as the Steambird, I also looked at some other independent publications out there, which tend to be more specialized. For example, there's The Observer for celebrity gossip, Leisure Weekly, which focuses on competitive sport and other entertainment news, Top Chef for those who like to read all the food critiques in one place, and Bedazzled, which is just sort of a glorified rumor and speculation mill. I learned a whole lot from reading all those papers. Or, well, I at least learned how to master a bunch of different writing styles. I once spent six months working undercover for an expose piece about a merchant who was selling shoddy food products. I disguised myself as a vagrant, infiltrated the back kitchen, took a job as a kitchen hand, and stuck around until I'd gathered enough solid evidence about their misdeeds. Then I put it all in an article and had it published in the paper. Oh, the backlash was intense. They were punished for their crimes, sure, but that didn't stop them from launching a vicious campaign of vengeance against me almost immediately. I was coming home to threat letters sitting on my bedside table on a daily basis, and we'd also find mud slung on the front door to our office. The Steambird quickly filed a report to the guards, and I was sent to Mondstadt to report on Genius Invocation TCG. Oh, it took a while before I could safely return to Fontaine. These kinds of things happen all the time. I honestly don't know how Ulfrosi deals with it. I've always been a very curious person. Even as a kid, long before I ever thought about going into journalism, I was always convinced that secrets and mysteries were lurking in every corner. To me, the world is a giant hoard of hidden treasure, with countless stories waiting to be uncovered. Every time I see something where I think a secret might be hiding, I snap a photo with my camera and add it to my collection. These photos are like my own personal treasure map, and I'm constantly going back to them, trying new ways to decipher them and expose the truth. I don't really care whether these hidden truths are significant, what they mean, or what the wider ramifications are. I just want to bring them into the light of day. To put it in adventurer terms, I guess for me, it's all about the thrill of the chase and not the treasure at the end. I've also met a lot of people along the way. All my Fontaine friends, Urfra C., who believes I was born to be a journalist, and people like you who join me in the search for the truth. Without everyone's help, I'd probably still be that nosy kid who runs around furiously snapping photos like a lunatic. Anywho, it's not often that I get to be the interviewee, but this has been a real pleasure. Now that her father's name's been cleared and the case of the serial disappearances of young women is resolved, I guess Navia must be able to finally breathe a little easier. I don't know why, but somehow she's found herself at the epicenter of all sorts of bad news lately. Luckily for her, I've been snatching up all the articles that mention her and doing whatever damage control I can before they get published. <laughs> and, uh, then getting told off constantly by Ufrazi for interfering. But, you know, I think Navia deserves a break, so I'm happy to take one for the team. Also, she agreed to do an in-depth exclusive interview, which definitely sweetens the deal. Oh, surprise, surprise. Linny refused an interview with me once again. Do you know how many times that is now? Uh, actually, I've lost count. But never mind. Evading me only further confirms my suspicion that he's hiding the new story of a lifetime. As long as I keep digging, I'll find it. And when I do, it will shake the world like no other news report in history. No matter what question you pose to her, Lynette just calmly lowers her eyes with an expressionless look on her face. It's like she's some sort of clockwork doll. I'm really tempted to write an article titled something like The Genius Magician's Puppet Assistant, Magic's Best Kept Secret. But I have a sneaking suspicion that even that wouldn't get a reaction out of her. Clorand is one of the most well-known champion duelists in Fontaine, but she's also the most mysterious. 
I have a source who tells me that she uses some sort of mystical ritual to keep her weapon as good as new. Could this be the secret behind her famously undefeated track record in the duelist ring? Ah, I'd love to spring that question on her one day, but I don't think I'll get the chance. She's publicly stated that she doesn't accept interviews. So, did you get to meet the Duke in person? Yeah? Any nuggets of information that I should know about? Never mind the credit coupons, the coupon cafeteria. If a man will not work, he shall not eat. That's all just generic filler. I'm talking about personal anecdotes about the man of Maripede himself. Huh? What do you mean, confidentiality? Oh, not you two. We had a deal. That does it. Remember that gigantic feast I treated you to? I want my money back. Get your butts back to prison and do your time, you swindlers, you. Emily makes the best perfume in the whole court of Fontaine. She introduced me to this amazing one the other day that works as an insect repellent, antiperspirant, and deodorant all in one. Oh, it's a total lifesaver for someone like me who spends so much time zooming around all over the place. Oh, I actually sprayed some on my wrist today. Go on, take a whiff. Oh, it's heavenly. I did a little snooping around at Chioria Boutique once. Aside from the wealthy housewives of Fontaine and the box-ticking tourists from overseas, some of the regular customers there look like really rough characters. Big, muscly types with scars on their face, guys in masks and hats with their swords drawn. But they always come bearing gifts and acting like humble servants. Yeah, well, mostly. Anyone with a bad attitude is literally sent flying back out the door. Seriously, I snapped a photo of a guy being thrown out once. He was like four feet in the air. I've met Fremenet a few times since being introduced. He quickly took an interest in Monsieur Verite, that's my camera slash assistant, and even made a few improvements to my lenses. I gotta say, though, my heart was in my mouth watching him completely dismantle Monsieur Verite in a matter of seconds. Amazing he managed to reassemble it just as swiftly. He seems very experienced. I was convinced he must have graduated from the Fontaine Research Institute, but he denied it. If you want to interview the Udex, you have to provide all the interview questions in advance and get them reviewed by the relevant department at the Palais Mermonia, who decide which questions to approve and which ones you're not allowed to ask. It's their way of making sure the interview goes off without a hitch. Oh, it's such a rigmarole. I'm losing the will to live just talking about it. Lady Farina has a very captivating presence. She was born to be a star. Ufrazi once assigned a journalist to shadow her, but he quit not long into the assignment. From what I've heard, the reason he left was that Farina insisted on seeing every photo he took of her right away, and she'd make him redo it if she wasn't happy with how it turned out. Apparently, she was so picky that the poor guy once had to take 127 shots of her in the same pose before she was content. I love collecting different camera lenses. They all have different strengths. Some might have an incredible range of focal lengths. Others might have a really wide field of view. Oh, and there's also more novelty ones that can apply special effects to the image. Now take this one, for example. When you take a portrait photo with this, it turns their face all chubby. Come on, I'll take one of you. And you, Paimon. <laughs>